Hello friends, welcome to Beyond Travel and today I am in the US and I want to take you and show you five things you need to try when traveling in the US. So let's start. It's early morning and the first thing on our list is a classic American coffee, a filter coffee, drip coffee, whatever you call it. Now, a lot of my Italian friends and my wife probably wouldn't even call it a coffee. But just like when you go to Italy and you have to try espresso, right here you have to drink the Americano coffee. This is actually a very cool place. It is a old gas station turned into a coffee place. Now I have with me my very good friend Jay who's gonna join me on this uh, journey through food and drinks today. Uh, so let's have a coffee with him first. When I met you, you didn't even like coffee. I hated coffee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I only drank tea. Like, like a good English. Like a good English yeah. man only tea. So what made you drink coffee? Um, to be honest, over here you're immersed in it, it's everywhere. Um, and you can't get a good cup of tea. So oh, really? through necessity. Yeah, I kind of had to. I needed caffeine in the morning, so <laughs> you got to find some way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it now, though. One thing I forgot to mention about American coffee is that it's famously free to refill. If you go to a diner, you're just being served almost automatically an Americana coffee. And by the time you're halfway through or almost finished with your cup, they come and ask you if you want more. The refills are famously free, so you sometimes, unfortunately, drink too much coffee. But it's part of the experience. Number two on our list are classic American pancakes. They're completely different to the European, which are more like crepes. This one are fluffy, completely different. Do you like them? What are your favorite pancakes, guys? Any pancakes that's on the plate? <laughs> my mom's pancakes. My mom's pancakes. Mom's pancakes. Mom, mom's pancakes are always the best, but today we're here in Millie's Cafe where we're gonna try American pancakes. Definitely recommend you to try some of them. Do you prefer um, a European or American? I actually prefer American pancakes. I know they're sacrilege, right? There we go, there we go, you gotta try them. More coffee. <laughs> Number three on our list is a not even American dish, but it's been adopted and imported here in the West and Southwest uh, to the extent that it has its own day. And we're talking about tacos and Tacos Tuesdays. We're gonna get one from this famous van, so let's go. As seen from Netflix. <laughs> what are you guys getting? Um, wait, what do we get? I'm getting an asada. And a chorizo. And maybe a chicken. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. These are some really tasty tacos. You have to admit that. Las tortillas son hechas a mano. Son hechas a mano las tortillas. Eh, la carne que eh, lleva asada, de carne asada, eh, chicken o de pollo, eh, de chorizo. Eh, se le echan si, si el cliente desea, se le echa lo que es guacamole. Se le echa este repollo, le cebolla y la salsa roja pues que es la, la picante. Muchas gracias. ¿Cómo te llamas? Eh, Richard. Richard, Martin. Mucho gusto. Gracias. Bye. Hasta luego. Number four on our list of foods to try when traveling in the US is burgers. But I don't mean classic ordinary American burgers. I actually mean the impossible burgers. The impossible burgers are actually illegal in Europe. That's just because they have uh, genetically modified soya. So your only chance to try them is actually outside of Europe. And here we are today in Monty's, which is a plant-based burgers and they serve one of the best, in my opinion, uh, impossible burgers in LA. What makes a good burger? 
Oh, dude, you gotta have good bread. You gotta have a little bit of lettuce. Fresh, thick pickles. Thick tomatoes. I really like bacon and avocado with my burger. Each burger, like, based on where it's from, needs its own sauce. Every sauce has to be a little bit different. I'm a, a mayonnaise bus kind of guy. And it allows your hot sauce and jalapenos. Right. Yeah. And then me personally, I like meat. A normal burger, I feel like, has a more hearty feel. Impossible is definitely a lot lighter, a lot, like, just easier on the stomach. So we got a double with two patties, so you got a single. And then we got a 50 50 split of tater tots and french fries. Very American. Yeah, sriracha, ketchup, or whatever. First impression? A delight. I'm impressed. Finally, number five on our list are cocktails. Now we are in Jay's house at the moment because it's not easy to film any cocktails, but he's the best man to actually tell us all about why cocktails, why you should try cocktails while traveling through US, because he's been in the industry for the last 15, 20? 20, yeah. 20 God, years. Show my age. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, what cocktails should people try when traveling? So the ultimate we're drinking here is the old fashioned. The original cocktail. Cheers. The godfather of cocktails. The godfather of cocktails. Cheers. What I want to give you guys are some bar recommendations from someone who's been living here, what, 10 years in the US now? Exactly 10 years. Exactly yeah. 10 years. 10 years in the uh, American industry of uh, cocktails. So let's start with the East Coast. New York, where people can go uh, find a good cocktail. My favorite bar out there is Dead Rabbit. It's okay. a Irish, like an Irish pub kind of thing. And upstairs they've got this beautiful cocktail bar. Uh, you can get cocktails downstairs, but it's mainly Irish whiskies. And then upstairs it's just a gorgeous cocktail bar up there, really, really lovely. So I would say you can get a crack in old fashioned there. Good, yeah, good. Like but that. we are in LA, so let's get some recommendations from the West Coast. So, I mean, there are so many. Um, one that just reopened on Hollywood and Highland is Powerhouse. Okay. So this bar used to be frequented by the Beatles, Janis Joplin, all okay. crazy rock and roll stars when they were playing at Hollywood Bowl. Um, and it just reopened and it's a real great down-to-earth locals bar. You can have a crack in old-fashioned, you can sip on a Manhattan or just have a beer and a whiskey. So it's great. It's a really good spot. That's good, good. And um, maybe let's drop in one more. So we have three bars. One in, uh, in New York, one in LA, and then I'll let you choose one other one anywhere. Ooh, um, I would say Seven Grand in San Diego is a pretty banging one. That's a good one. And again, classic old fashioned, but you can get all three of those drinks there. You can get a sour, a Manhattan, and a nice. old fashioned. Ooh top quality drinks. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found value in um, in our recommendations and our conversations. Uh, if you did, you know what to do. Like and subscribe uh, for more, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers, mate.